The DC Corruption Club. From 2001 to 2005, there was an ongoing investigation into the Clinton Foundation donations from around the world. A grand jury was impaneled. Yet from 2001 to 2003, none of these donations to the Clinton Foundation were declared. Now you would think an honest investigator would be able to figure this out. Guess who took over this investigation in 2002? None other than James Comey. Guess who was transferred in to the Internal Revenue Service to run the tax exemption branch of the IRS? Your friend and mine, Lois Lerner. Now guess who ran the tax division inside the Department of Justice from 2001 to 2005? None other than the Assistant Attorney General of the United States, Rod Rosenstein. Guess who was the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation during this time frame? I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but it was Robert Mueller. Now what do all four of our characters have in common? They were all briefed or were frontline investigators into the Clinton Foundation investigation. Now let's fast forward to 2009. James Comey leaves the Justice Department to go and cash in at Lockheed Martin. Hillary Clinton is running the State Department on her own personal email server, by the way. The Uranium One issue comes to the attention of Hillary. Like all good public servants do, she decides to support the decision and approve the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium to none other than the Russians. Now, you would think this is a fairly straight-up deal, except it wasn't. The people got absolutely nothing out of it. However, prior to the sales approval, Bill Clinton himself goes to Moscow, gets paid $500,000 for a one-hour speech, then meets with Vladimir Putin at his home. Okay, no big deal, right? Well, not so fast. The FBI has a mole inside the money laundering and bribery scheme in the Clinton Foundation. Guess who was the FBI director during this time? Yep, Robert Mueller. He even delivered a uranium sample to Moscow in 2009. Guess who was handling that case within the Justice Department out of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Maryland? Rod Rosenstein. Guess what happened to the informant? The Department of Justice placed a gag order on him and threatened to lock him up if he spoke out about it. So how does 20% of the most strategic asset of the United States of America end up in Russian hands when the FBI has an informant, a mole, providing inside information to the FBI on the criminal enterprise? Guess what happened soon after the sale was approved? $145 million in donations made their way into the Clinton Foundation from entities directly connected to the Uranium One deal. Guess who was still at the Internal Revenue Service working the charitable division? Yep, Lois Lerner. Now that's all just another series of coincidences. Nothing to see here, right? So let's fast forward to 2015. Due to a tragic series of events in Benghazi, and after the nine investigations, the House, the Senate, and its State Department, Trey Gowdy, who was running the 10th investigation as chairman of the Select Committee on Benghazi, discovered that Hillary ran the State Department on an unclassified, unauthorized, personal email server. He also discovered that none of these emails had been turned over when she departed her public service as Secretary of State, which was required by law. He also discovered that there was top secret information contained within her personally archived email, sparing you the State Department cover-up, the stories they floated, the delay tactics that were employed, and the outright lies that were spewed forth from the Kerry State Department. We shall leave it with this. They did everything humanly possible to cover for Hillary Clinton. Now this is amazing. Guess who became FBI director in 2013? And guess who secured 17 no-bid contracts for his employer, Rocky Martin, with the State Department and was subsequently rewarded with a $6 million thank you present when he departed his employer? None other than James Comey. Amazing how all those no-bid contracts just sailed right through at the State Department. 
Now he's the FBI director in charge of the Clinton email investigation. After, of course, his FBI investigates the Lois Lerner matter at the Internal Revenue Service and exonerates her. Nope, couldn't find any crimes there. Can you guess what happened next? In April 2016, James Comey drafted an exoneration letter of Hillary Rodham Clinton. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice is handing out immunity deals like candy. They never even convened a grand jury. Like a lightning bolt of statistical impossibility, like a miracle from God himself, James Comey steps out into the cameras of an awaiting press conference on July 8th of 2016 and exonerates Hillary from any wrongdoing. Can you see the pattern? It goes on and on. Rosenstein becomes assistant attorney general. Comey gets fired based on a letter by Rosenstein. Comey leaks government information to the press. Mueller is assigned to the Russia investigation sham by Rosenstein to provide cover for decades of malfeasance within the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the story continues. FISA abuse, political espionage, pick a crime, any crime, chances are this group and a few others did it. All the same players, all compromised and conflicted, all working fervently not to go to jail themselves, all connected in one way or another to the Clintons. How many lives have these two destroyed? As of this writing, the Clinton Foundation, in its 20 years of operation of being the largest international charity fraud in the history of mankind, has never been audited by the IRS. Let's not forget that Comey's brother works for DLA Piper, the law firm that does the Clinton Foundation's taxes. So let me ask you this, who is Lisa Barsoomian? Let's learn a little bit about Mrs. Lisa H. Barsoomian's background. She was a U.S. attorney that graduated from Georgetown Law. She is a protege of James Comey and Robert Mueller. Barsoomian, with her boss R. Craig Lawrence, represented Bill Clinton in 1998. Lawrence also represented Robert Mueller three times, James Comey five times, Barack Obama 45 times, Kathleen Sebelius 56 times, Bill Clinton 40 times, and Hillary Clinton 17 times. Between 1998 and 2017, Barsoomian herself represented the FBI at least five times. You may be saying to yourself, okay, who cares about the work history of this Barsoomian woman? Lisa Barsoomian has specialized in the opposing Freedom of Information Act requests on behalf of the intelligence community. And although Barsoomian has been involved in hundreds of cases representing the DC office of the US attorney, her email address is lisabarsoomian at nih.gov. That stands for National Institutes of Health. This is a tactic routinely used by the CIA to protect an operative by using a government organization to shield her activities. It's a cover, right? It's a big deal. What does one more attorney with ties to the U.S. intelligence community really matter? It deals with Trump and his recent tariffs on Chinese steel and aluminum imports, the border wall, DACA, everything coming out of California, the Uniparty's unrelenting opposition to President Trump, the Clapper leaks, the Comey leaks, Attorney Jeff Sessions' recusal, and last but not least, Mueller's never-ending investigation into collusion between the Trump team and the Russians. So why does Barsoomian, the CIA operative, merit any mention? Because she is Assistant Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's wife. That's why. Share this information with everyone.